What's up YouTube? This is Buckshot33, aka Boss and Chris, back with a brand new video. So, this is my haul from last week, which combines a few books from the week before as well. Um, just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, just kind of combining videos for the fact that, you know, it's been um, a little bit busy for me over the past couple weeks, and um, I just haven't had time to get out and make videos as quickly um, as I'd like to. So, with no further ado, let's get into the books. So, we got... Spirits of Vengeance, number two. Uh, pretty cool title with uh, Damien Hellstorm, Satana, Blade, and Ghost Rider. Um, this is a short series. It's only, I think, going to be either five or eight issues, I think, total. So, pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get that second print variant of the Ken Lashley co cover from number one. Um, that's, I guess, non lenticular So, keep an eye out for that on eBay. But next up, we got Flash, issue number 34. Um, pretty cool title. This is one of the better Rebirth titles. Um, I collect three issues mainly in that entire um, you know Rebirth run, which is basically um, for me the best titles. The titles I enjoy the most is Batman, Flash, and Green Lanterns. I've been reading those all since issue number one. All of them have kept up and been really good, so I'm happy about that. Um, next up, we have a, a, a kind of a departure from that from the Rebirth. This is. Um, Supergirl number 15. This is an art germ cover. The only reason why I bought this is because it's art germ. Um, I don't have any art germ stuff. Um, I know that, you know, depending on what book it is, you end up paying an arm and a leg for some of his uh, covers. So I figured this one's cover price. I'm going to pick this one up. So that's what I did. Um, you know. Um, next we have an image number one. This is Port of Earth um, number one. And, um, you know, kind of a sci fi book. Um, pretty cool, you know, it's always good every once in a while to take a chance on some of these uh, image number ones so you don't know what's going to be the next big book to come out from them. Um, but I thought it was pretty good. Art's really good. Um, you know, writing seems pretty cool. So I think that um, this is something that I can stick with for a couple issues just to see where it goes. Um, next up we have, this is Darth Vader issue number 7. Um, this actually has been a really good series. Actually, both series of Darth Vader. So this is Volume Volume Two. Volume One was really good, and Volume Two was. And uh, the funny thing with that is, you figure Darth Vader is a person who has his whole story established throughout the movies. I mean, um, the prequel trilogy. You know, you go from the point of when he's a kid all the way up to when he, you know, turns to the dark side and becomes Darth Vader. And then you have, you know, just the five through six, the original trilogy where he kind of redeems himself and, you know, basically tells Luke that he was right about him having good still inside of him. Um, being that you have the whole complete story of him, I figured it would be kind of tough to tell a story of Star Wars, um, you know, pertaining directly to him, being that, you know, the, the entire story of Anakin has been told, for the most part. All, all the major events have been told in the movies. But they've done a good job of um, kind of getting... From, I guess you could say, from the end of Revenge of the Sith to, let's say, about uh, before Rogue One, as far as, um, you know, the storytelling and what they're doing with it. So, um, definitely a good series to pick up. If you haven't picked up um, any of issue, no, I'm sorry, uh, Volume 1, um, you may have to look for it just in trade now. I mean, you can find a lot of the issues, but there's going to be a bunch more that you won't be able to get, like uh, the first appearance of Dr. Aphra and stuff like that. Um, you can get them in second prints, but not in first, most likely. Um, I mean, you, you, it all depends on how much you're willing to spend. But um, beyond that, you know, um, like I said, it's been a good series. If you can get your hands on um, this series, or if you just want to read the, both stories in trade, definitely worth the read. Um, continuing on, um, got issue number eight. Um, pretty cool cover here. I like this one. You see, um, you know, that uh, Darth Vader has kind of been dismantled at this point. Um, you know, contrary to what might be a little bit of popular belief here, um, that guy is sitting there meditating is not Vader. Um, the reason you can tell is that uh, he has both arms and legs. Um, Vader doesn't have both of his, well, he doesn't have his original arms and legs. Um, he only has a mechanical arm, and then the rest is just the suit because it got cut off by Obi Wan. But um, you know, pretty cool comic. I haven't got a chance to read this one, so I have to go ahead and see what happens there. But overall, like I said, it's been a very solid story. Um, next we have Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan number 2. 
Um, issue number one wasn't too bad. I'm going to hopefully uh, be on the same path for number two. We'll see if it's any better or if it's, you know, more of the same. Um, or if, it's, if it stinks, then I'm just going to go ahead and pass it by. But next we have Amazing Spider-Man issue number 791. Um, you know, just a continuation on of the um, ongoing series with the renumbering for the legacy. Um, this has been a pretty cool series. Uh, you know, I enjoy it. Um, love these covers that Alex Ross does. Like, um, that's actually what you know really attracted me to the book itself. Was uh, he started doing the covers and everything just looked really, really nice going forward. So, um, you know, definitely um, you know an added bonus to have some Alex Ross covers. But on top of that, too, the story's been pretty good, so, um, you know, worth picking up. Next, we have Spider-Man number two, issue number four. This is, um, Spider-Man two is basically a story of two Miles Morales existing in the Marvel Universe, and they're trying to figure out who the other Miles is and what's going on with him. Like, like why is there two of them there? Um, so, pretty cool story. Um, you know, this, I want to say, is probably Bendis' last story, seeing as how he moved over to DC, so, um... You know, this is, I'm assuming, been all plotted out and done with, so we just getting them as they, you know, release them, but, um, pretty cool stuff to have. Um, next we have Batman issue number, uh, 35, which is actually the 800th issue of Batman. Um, pretty cool. Um, love this cover. This is a Tony Daniels cover. Um, you know, you get the 800, you get the bats, you know, and he's ready to, you know, go into fight mode here. Really, really well done. Um, story's been really great. Um, all the way from issue one till now. Um, definitely a, a fan of, um, you know, just the series and everything. Um, next up we have Green Lanterns number 35. So this is, um, you know, new story in this. Old Balfunga, where art thou? Kind of uh, play on Old Brother, where art thou? That uh, George Clooney movie from back in the day. Um, this also has been a really good series. You know, watching uh, Simon Baz and Jesse Cruz uh, come of age as Lanterns and, and just kind of get themselves used to being part of the core and seeing the ups and downs that they have um, as far as trying to, you know, police the universe and make sure it's safer for everybody else. Um, really cool story and definitely, uh, um, you know, solid title from Rebirth. Um, next up we have The Realm number three. This is the um, cover B. Um, I couldn't find cover A when I went to the shop, but this is actually a really good image number, uh, uh, sorry, a really good uh, new image title. Um, definitely a fan of this. Um, I would say, you know, um, this is one that I think has potential to stick around for a while and be, um, you know, a pretty good series for, um, you know, for Image going forward. Um, definitely worth checking out. It's only up to issue number three. So if you haven't picked it up yet, you can find issues number one and two probably very easy. So pick up all three, you know, check them out. I figure, you know, three issues is, is a good barometer to check and see if you like a comic or not. Um, you know, if you like the way it's going, if you like the direction of it and everything like that. Um, after that, if you're not, you know, if after three issues you're not really quite sure of a book, you, you know, pretty much just drop it. But I, I like it. I think it's really been done well, and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it lasts for a long time and becomes a bigger title. Um, but who knows? You know, image number ones kind of make their way around. So um, next we have Ninja K, and this is actually kind of a weird, weird um, pickup for me as far as um, it being a Valiant book. I don't really buy many Valiant books. Um, a lot of people know Ninjak or Ninja K from back in the day, um, Valiant, and, you know, I have a bunch of, you know, the old story, and the art was okay. Um, they used to have the gimmick, gimmick covers. They used to have, um, you know, huge print runs. I mean, you, you can... There's, there's a, only a handful of Valiant books that actually have, you know, demand a high price. Um, you know, the rest of them you can pick up for, like, literally, like, you know, 50 cents each, something like that, um, but they've done a really good job in this second run of, um, you know, the second, I guess, go of Valiant Comics. They've gotten a lot of good artists, a lot of good writers, um, to go ahead and, you know, contribute to these stories and, and kind of reinvent these characters. How they've reinvented him is, you know, just the name itself, Ninja K. So it's kind of like a James Bond thing where you have, um, 007 and then there's other spies that preceded him, double, you know, six, five, four, three, you know, all that. Um, so he has the same thing, and they tell the story in this book, um, how you see, like, you know, Ninja A started off, like, you know, in World War One and, or maybe even earlier than that, and, you know, Ninja B and all the rest. Um, you know, they, they just show different ninjas throughout time. Ninja K happens to be the, um, you know, current ninja 
in this current present present time and um he's he's pretty cool i mean the the art in this is actually really good i was surprised by that i didn't think it was going to be that good of the art in here but you know it is what it is you know it's it's kind of funny but um worth picking up and my local shop was giving it uh, the regular cover for a dollar that came out with a bunch of different covers it came out i think with like six or seven so um you know definitely worth picking up if you can get it for a dollar on top of that too it's, it's just definitely worth just picking up because it's a different kind of book um, you know, if you were skeptical about Valiant back in the day, give it a shot. It's pretty good stuff. Um, next, we have a book that I picked up for uh, Undisputed Frost, and that is um, the Halloween Comic Fest um, version of Tick in full color. So this is, I think, Tick number one um, that they reprinted and put in full color here. Um, so the funny part is, so this place, New England Comics, this has been the shop that I've gone to since I was nine. Um, and they have multiple locations. The one that's the closest to me wasn't participating in this, so they didn't actually even have this book. I had to go to the one nearby to my work to get this. Um, it's funny, too, just because, like, I, I think about it. I could have probably had the entire Tick run, and it's funny to me when I hear people talk about, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, I love the Tick, and, you know, I, I hope that, you know, yeah, like, I would love to pick up some issues, and da-da-da-da. It's just like, you know, I know for myself, it's just like, I could have had all that stuff and you know I never was a really big fan of the tick I never you know I, I watched a cartoon um, but I never really got into it all that much and um, it's just so funny that people think oh like you know like it's funny what some people can get in certain areas and some people can't and um, the tick is just one of those things where it's like I, I mean my shop has been trying to push the tick on me forever and try to get me to be a fan I'm just kinda like eh not really for me but um you know I'm glad to go ahead and you know give this over to him so um, I'm going to be sending out that box full of comics for you and, um, you know, just include this in there with it. Um, so finally, I have one last piece here, and this is just a um, back issue. I try my best to get, like, at least one back issue, whether it's a complete run um, or if it's a good deal, something like that. Um, and this one actually ends up being a book that was going to be on my uh, list for next year for the, uh, my top ten books for 2018. Um, so that's for a good price. Um, so again, local shop, New England, New England Comics got a big collection um, that they had taken in from one of the locations down um, in, in southern Massachusetts and um, so what happened I guess was the collection was big enough um, that it had like you know a lot of um, silver and bronze and copper age stuff that they went ahead and um, distributed amongst a few different stores and so this happened to be one of the ones that popped up in there and I was really excited to get it um, so we have X Factor number 24. This is the first appearance of Archangel. Um, now, it's not the first. Uh, so, the cameo is 23. And there is um, some dialogue, and you get to see, um, you know, Archangel, but he's wearing a mask. Um, this one, he actually comes out, he's got the mask, and he takes it off, reveals that he's Warren Worthington, um, and then actually fights against the X Men. So, this is a pretty cool uh, book to have. Um, I've, I've seen this online. Um, go for a, you know not, not a huge amount of money but just some you know a little bit more than I'd like to pay for it so when I saw it in my shop and um, you know saw the price that it was I had to pick it up but um, that's my haul that's everything that I picked up for this week or for last week I should say because we're into Monday so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get off and just thank everybody for watching again this has been Buckshot 33 aka Boston Chris letting everybody know as we head to Thanksgiving to have a happy Thanksgiving and have a safe Thanksgiving. If you're going out shopping on Black Friday, be safe, be smart. Um, you know, don't get trampled trying to get the door buses and nothing like that. Um, don't get arrested being stupid and you know beating up the last person that got the you know gift that you wanted or whatever. Just everybody have some fun. Um, enjoy you some turkey, watch some football if you like football, and just have a fun holiday. Um, check us out tomorrow on the JLS live show. We're gonna do a special. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a little bit of a shorter show, but special Tuesday edition of the show um, where we're going to discuss Justice League and Punisher and a few other things um, that come up. So, um, you know, check us out tomorrow. It'll be 8.30 p.m. And um, we're just going to have a little bit of fun before we head off for the holiday. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, this has been Buckshot33, a.k.a. Boston Chris. I'm out.